Is the glass half empty or half full? Depends who you ask. For those of you who are long-term value investors, you are probably very familiar with The Intelligent Investor by Benjamin Graham. One of the concepts in The Intelligent Investor is the idea of Mr. Market. The idea that the market is somewhat of a pendulum. It swings between optimism and pessimism. People are too afraid of stocks and they go into a selling frenzy and people are way too optimistic about the evaluation of stocks and they are on a buying frenzy and most of the time they end up doing exactly the opposite of what they should be doing they're buying high and they're selling low and while most of us in the personal finance investing youtube space talk about the swings in the pendulum of the market very few of us actually talk about how you can identify whether or not the market is being too pessimistic or too optimistic. For those of you who are new to my channel, my name is Alex. I make videos about personal finance, investing, and philosophy. I find that there is a connection between the mindset that is necessary in investing and how we think about managing our money with just how we live our daily lives. And in this video, I'm gonna go over a really simple trick about how you can identify whether or not the market is a little bit too optimistic or a little bit too pessimistic. But before we get it, please like, comment, and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. Okay, so before we really get into it, let's just get the baseline stuff out of the way. We understand that one of the main principles in investing is just buy low and sell high. Now, sometimes the market has a tendency to swing beyond its normal evaluation and things are a little bit overpriced. There is irrational exuberance, a lot of optimism in the market, which pushes prices higher somewhat beyond its value. But on the flip side, there is irrational pessimism where people think that everything is just tanking they're selling off stocks they're selling off their investments they think everything's going to crash this leads to a point where the price of certain assets certain stocks are actually below its intrinsic value which makes it a really good buying opportunity so we understand that you want to buy low you want to sell high you do not want to sell low and buy high Oh God, that's a, that's, a weird, that's a weird matrix going on. But how do you identify whether or not there is irrational exuberance, way too much optimism, or way too much pessimism? You might need to do a lot of technical analysis and fundamental analysis when it comes to investigating a stock or an investment, uh, reading the balance sheet. But when it comes to understanding pessimism and optimism, we're talking about human psychology. What are people thinking? So the strategy in a nutshell is to look at the data, the raw data. What news are you consuming? What is the actual information? And then determine how did the market actually react to that information? Because most of the time, the market can actually react in two very different ways with one bit of information. And I think the best way to describe this is via an example. So let's take the interest rate set by the Federal Reserve. So this interest rate is a very common tool that's used to uh, improve the economy. If things are doing really poorly, the Fed will lower interest rates so that it makes it easier to borrow money. If they find that things are going really well, they'll start to actually increase that interest rate, making it harder to borrow money as a way of combating inflation. So let's say that a news article comes out and the Fed increases the interest rate from three to 4%. There are two different reactions to this bit of information. In one case, wait, what? The Fed, the Fed increased the interest rate? This is terrible. That means businesses can't borrow money. It's gonna be so much harder. The market's gonna crash, sell it all, sell it all! And in the second case, wait, they, the interest rates, they, they, they're increasing. That means the economy must be doing well. Inflation must be increasing. So the economy's doing well, the market's doing well. Every, everything's going up, keep buying, just keep buying everything. Okay, so the same information, two very different responses. And it's usually pretty easy to tell when you're either reading the newspaper or watching the news and just seeing how people respond to the same information. In one case, 
people were very, very optimistic about the prospect of the Fed increasing the interest rate. And in one case, they were very pessimistic about what it means for the Fed to increase the interest rate. Let's take another example. I remember several years ago, a stock, uh, BASF, lost a lawsuit. They lost like a billion dollars. Now, on the surface, this is terrible. You do not want a company to lose a billion dollars. And yet, I was surprised to learn that the value of the stock had not changed. You would think that, oh, you know, it would go down because they're about to lose a billion dollars. But the interpretation of the news was not that of the company losing money. It was the interpretation that the company had such solid financial fundamentals that they could take a $1 billion loss and be fine. Similarly, that news could have been interpreted very differently. That news could have totally tanked the stock, but instead it actually kept it just about the same, maybe even a little bit higher. So the important information here is that you look at the facts and most of the time the facts are very easy to see. It's data. It's a $1 billion lost lawsuit. It's the interest rate going up by one or two percent. A company produced this much profit. There are factual bits of information. But then you look at how are those facts actually presented? Is it presented with a level of optimism that, oh, things are really, really good? Or is it with a level of pessimism? Another example is just if there's quarterly earnings for a company and they only beat it by like one cent, well, some people think, oh, it should have beat it expectations by like five cents a share. They made money, man. <laughs> they were positive. And yet, despite being positive, the stock may have gone down. So these are indicators of pessimism and optimism when it comes to the market, when it comes to individual investments, and it's a way to gauge investor sentiment in general. And to end this, I would just like to say that you should always look at the facts. We should be looking at what is the data. We should be going to the primary sources. In investing, it's looking at the balance sheet. It's looking at the SEC filings. It's looking at the quarterly earnings of the company. It's looking at the facts, the numbers, the data. And then, only after that, should you be forming an opinion about it. As a scientist, I like to think of myself as being somewhat open-minded, that I can be swayed by new information, new data. I would say the best sign of being a scientist is when you have worked on something for a long time and you're so convinced that what you have done is right and you've done many experiments to demonstrate that what you've done is correct, that, that your, your data supports this theory, this hypothesis that you have. And yet only later down the road to be proven wrong by someone else who has done more experiments and has created a new model that describes the phenomenon that your experiments do. And to be able to accept those things, to be open-minded enough to accept this new data and not be rigid in our thinking is really the signs of a great scientist, a great investor, and just a great person. As I said earlier in this video, it almost doesn't matter whether or not you're pessimistic or optimistic but whether other people are optimistic or pessimistic because they're going to skew the information for you even when you didn't ask for it. No charge. They didn't even charge you for it. So yeah, folks, this is one way of identifying some level of pessimism or optimism in the market. Look at the facts, see how people are responding. Not necessarily how you respond, but how do other people respond? And that similarly, we shouldn't always be swayed by how other people respond. And in life, it should be the same way. We should construct our own views and opinions about things and be open-minded to receiving new information and formulating new views based on what we've learned. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, subscribe. I would really appreciate it. And I'll see you soon.